The Lost Sanctuary Structure Deck is here. Make sure you guys smash the like button and that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. We're going to be going over Lost Sanctuary. Is the structure deck going to be worth being a structure deck when it arrives here in the TCG? I don't know, but we're going to use our best judgment to check over these cards and look at how the deck is constructed in the SCG. So Majesty Hyperion, this is going to be one of the two uh, highlights for this deck. So you can smash some of this card from your hand or graveyard by banishing one the Agent Monster from your hand field or graveyard. So Earth, Venus, Mars, all of the little disciples are able to be used as this fodder. You can always watch some of Majesty I Premium once per turn this way. All battle damage you take from battles involving your fairy monsters is also inflicted to your opponent. So you can technically ram a bunch of monsters, that's fine. And then once per turn, you can banish one fairy monster from your hand or graveyard, target one card in either graveyard, banish it. If Sanctuary in the Sky is on the field or in the graveyard, you can use this effect up to twice per turn. Overall, not a bad boss monster. It's really weird that its stats were inversed at 2127, but that is our big, big, I guess, focus for this deck. Now, the Agent of Life, Neptune. So we can discard this card, dispatch summon one the Agent Monster from her hand or graveyard. I really wish that this gave us the ability to summon from the deck, but alas, they didn't think that was good enough. But it cannot be tributed until the end of your opponent's turn. All right, so... That's interesting. I mean, at least you get to beam out an extender, and most of the time you're going to, uh, I guess, extend out Venus or Earth? But all right. If the Sanctuary of Sky is on the field or in the graveyard, you can smash some one Hyperion monster instead. So Master Hyperion can actually come out. If this card is banished, you can add one the Ancient, or, or ancient Sky uh, from your deck to your hand. So basically, if you have the big guy out, you use this as banished fodder. You can go recruit for a Sanctuary in the Sky. But this card just... Everything feels subpar for this deck to start here. Next up was Chorus in the Sky. This is one of the better cards that they got. So, pay a thousand life points. Target one fairy monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. Then if the Sanctuary in the Sky is on the field or in the graveyard, you can add one of your banished the Sanctuary in the Sky or one of your banished cards that specifically list the Ancient Sanctuary in the text to your hand. You can only activate one Chorus in the Sky once per turn. For a thousand life points, Getting the ability to tutor for anything back as a resource for the next turn is actually quite good. I'm actually surprised they didn't give this deck a searcher on top of Earth to basically make things more streamlined for the deck, but they value the recurability option because it's supposed to be a synchro-based strategy, so the recurability aspect makes sense here. Now, this is our centerpiece right here. This is by far... The best thing that we got. So when this card is activated, all right, set one, the Ancient Sanctuary in the Sky, or one spell on Trap Card that specifically lists that card in its text directly from your deck. All right? Check. That's really good. All right? This card's name becomes the Sanctuary in the Sky while on the field in the graveyard. Problem is, this only specifically lists the Sanctuary in the Sky in the text for some of your options. I really wish that you could tutor for this a lot easier, but it only counts as a Sanctuary in the Sky while in the field or in the graveyard. But the best effect is you can banish one fairy monster from your graveyard, target one effect monster your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of the turn, even if this card leaves the field. You have a once per turn negate and imperm, effectively. On activation, you get to set anything that has the Sanctuary in the Sky or a Spell Trap card that lists it in its card text from your deck to your field so you can use it for next turn. Your options went up really high with this. Downside is traps get a bad name in this game for being too slow at times, but this card really did aim to fix some of the problems that were initially generated with this archetype. And I think that that was a good patch by Konami's part, but I, this trap card needed a little bit more. And I, I hate to say it because this card is really good. Uh, we also got the Executor of Hades, Pluto. So this is one tuner plus one non-tuner to make it, and it's always treated as an agent monster. All right, so once per turn, you can banish one monster from graveyard, and then target one effect monster on the field, change it to face down defense position. This is a quick effect of the sanctuary in the sky is on the field or in the graveyard, so your trap card. All right, and then you can banish this card from your graveyard to add one the sanctuary in the sky from your deck or graveyard to your hand. This actually tutors back for the trap card because the trap will be named the sanctuary in the sky in the graveyard, which is a good, decent bonus effect. But my problem still here lies once per turn. I feel like the value isn't enough for me to want to leave this on the field to do anything. The cool thing is, though, that this actually is a tuner synchro monster for you to step on into the bigger guys here. Now, 
This is our bigger guy, Master Flare Hyperion. So it's one non-tuner plus one non-tuner fairy monster to make it on a level 10 body. All right, so technically the other guy that we just read, uh, plus what, a Venus and a Shine Ball would get you there. So you can send one the Agent monster or one monster specifically list the Sanctuary and this guy in the text from your hand deck or extra deck to the graveyard till until the end of the turn. This card's name becomes the sent monster's name and replace this effects with that monster's original effects. Any piece that you need from your deck or extra deck, this card becomes. All right, so technically as a filler spot for the archetype, it's not bad. When your opponent activates a card effect, quick effect, you can banish one fairy monster from your hand or graveyard, target one card in the field, banish it. Unfortunately, you read that correctly. It doesn't negate. But for a level of interruption on a 3200 body, it's not horrible. All right, I, most card effects in modern Yu-Gi-Oh do need that negate clause to really warrant some sort of push, but the replacement effect on this is what really makes this card shine. Next up here, we have Guard of the Agent's Moon. So this is two frickin' fairy monsters to make it. I really thought this should have been a Link one, but if this card is Link Summon, you can send one the Sanctuary in the Sky or one card that's specifically listed in its text, all right, from the deck to the graveyard. So you can go dump out our good friend the Trap card here, all right? Or if the Sanctuary in the Sky is on the field or in the graveyard, you can add one the Agent of Mystery Earth from your deck or graveyard to your hand instead. Okay, that's interesting. So we get some recurability action here. All right, so we just have to make sure we got the Sanctuary on the field so we can go. Uh, and we also have to make sure that we have access to said friend here. All right, you can tribute one fairy monster and then target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. You can only use each of the effects of Guard of the Agent's Moon once per turn. Anybody else feel like this should have been a Link one? I, I like what this card aims to do for the deck, but it feels a little bit short-handed at times. Ah, ah, so the Sacred Water of the Sky. Activate one, the Ancient Sanctuary, directly from your deck, or add one monster that specifically lists that card in its text from your deck to your hand. Okay, that's not bad. Then, if the Sanctuary in the Sky is on the field or in the graveyard, you can gain 500 life points for each Hyperion and the Agent monster you control. If your monster that specifically lists the Sanctuary in the Sky and its text is destroyed by battle, you match this card from your graveyard instead. This is the piece that brings it all together here, because you get the ability to tutor for anything in your deck that lists the Ancient Sanctuary in the Sky in its card text, all right? You have a trap card that acts as an imperm. You have Earth and Venus revolving around the Shine Balls, which is going to be the central synchro strategy of the deck. But overall, how does the rest of the deck look for reprints here? Now... The gallery here that we have for this is we know about Majesty, Neptune, Master Hyperion, and then Saturn, Mercury, Mars, and Jupiter all got reprints in here. All right. Uranus also got a reprint here. Let's be honest, Uranus didn't need the reprint. Currently, it only has one printing in Dewey, and it is uh, a little bit expensive. You get two Shine Balls per deck, which is not bad. Archul of Christia, Vanity's Ruler, Soul Purity and Light, Artifact Lancia. Remember that, that is a fairy monster. So are all the Spirit Sculptor Barrier, Statue of the Heavens, Ret Time Reviver Emitter. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that that'll be replaced, come us. Uh, Herald of Orange Light, that's a good reprint. Ava, frickin' Nibiru, of all things, gets the reprint here as well. So you've got some really good value presented there. Sanctuary in the Sky cards, the Sanctum of Parshat. Ah, yes. Ah, hey, look, it's another card that becomes a Sanctuary in the Sky. All right, Demise of Land. This is a very well-needed reprint as well. We have Light of Redemption, Creature Swap, Reasoning, Desires, Regeki, Feather Duster, Lost Sanctuary, Divine Punishment, Miraculous, Balance of Judgment, Compulse, Ring, Typhoon, and then, of course, Pluto, Herald of the Green... or Pure, Herald of Pure Light. Ah, oh, this guy, the Exceed. All right. And we also have the Celestial Night Lord, Parshath, in here as well. So, overall, what are my final thoughts on this deck? I think that this deck has potential in the tier two category for now. Uh, most of the things that we notice with a lot of these decks is a year, two years down the line, you snap your fingers like, holy crap, it's suddenly good. And you're like, 
wow, I have to deal with this now? So that's what we're seeing right now is this deck has potential. It, it got the searcher, it got the trap card it needed. It's just a little bit more generic fairy support can always help. Okay, so what do you think about the new deck? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. Smash the little bit of the subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more else content. I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day with some more quality content. Peace out, guys. Have a good Thank you, patrons, for making the ride never truly end without you guys' support. Well, I would probably be doing Truffle Shuffle videos for a living. Guys, please check out Vanquil 40 for all of your card fight Vanguard content brought to you by Mcol 40 And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out mcolgames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.